6 p.m. I see a quorum. There are uh, 11 towns represented. I will call the December 16th, 2021 special governing board meeting of CV Fiber to order. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, not hearing or seeing anything. So, sorry, Jer Jeremy, I have a, a quick one um, okay. about uh, communications committee membership. Communications committee membership. Let me add myself a note. Uh, I guess we should also uh, uh, the finance committee membership. All right, so, so we'll call it committee membership and we'll do both. That's great. Anything else? Okay, moving along, public comment. Is there anything folks would like to comment on that are, are not on, items that are not on the agenda? Um, I just wanted to profusely thank you all for uh, the news page on the website, uh, the newsletter, whatever we're calling it. Uh, that has really brought me up to speed on uh, the activities of the last six months um, and I was able, able to generate a update for the Barry City Council and uh, the mayor as a result. So thank you most sincerely for that. It's really well done. Yeah, kudos to John Walters, Chuck, and the rest of the communications committee for, for doing doing that work. That is <clears throat> invaluable outreach. I will definitely, definitely second that. Anything else? Okay. Financial report, Phil. Uh, isn't there minutes approval because we oh, have I'm sorry. Uh, You're right. two sets of minutes to approve. Meeting minutes approval. So uh, what are the dates for those? I, I didn't have those handy when I was creating well, these. Uh, motion to approve the uh, November 9th and November 16th governing board minutes as drafted. Second. Okay, moved by Jeremy, seconded by Siobhan to approve the those two meeting minutes. Any Questions, comments, otherwise? Okay, not seeing any. Any objections to adopting that motion? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay, anything else on meeting minutes? I don't think so. Moving along to financial report. Now, Phil. Okay, thank you. Uh, the current bank balance is $1,048,646. That's up a little bit from last, uh, <laughs> actually 10 minutes yesterday. Uh, we've uh, received a, uh, a an advance on a grant, uh, about 700 and uh, just over 700,000. Um, and we just, the, the executive committee just approved payment of invoices totaling about $110,000, uh, most notably uh, in, in the invoices being paid are for um, uh, poll inventory um, in uh, three communities. And uh, on top of that, there's some uh, project management fees, mapping software, uh, legal fees for some contract negotiations, um, accounting services. Any questions for Phil about the finances? Uh, Jeremy, I just, uh, I have yep. an outstanding invoice. I hope you'll forward it to Phil. Uh, okay, I, I thought we had taken care of that. Phil, do, did you get the invoice that I sent from RD? The second, the second uh, batch of uh, magnetic signs. Okay, I'll will, send it again if next. Yeah, what's send it again if you send it directly to me if you'd like. Th if we Thanks, have that number, sorry if for we that. Have that number. Can we add that to the bills that we approve? And let, can we get take care of that? We're not talking about a lot of money. No, no. What, what's and the total, just, RD? It's like three hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Don't worry about it. I'll send it again. Okay. Thanks, RD. Sorry, sorry that got uh, got lost. Don't in the, worry about the it. Shuffle. We we do have the signs. I mean, we 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 we've taken possession of the signs. So 
I, 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 I think we already a, a approved the payments. I mean, we already approved the expenditure. I just think that the check needs to get cut. Yeah, I don't see the invoice here. Um, so if um, if I I'll send it when we I'll send it after the meeting. Don't worry. Yeah, just send it to me, and um, I, it, it, it's probably been approved. I'll get it in the batch that's being cut. Got it, Jeremy. Um, yeah, kind of not about this. So if there's more on this, uh, you can finish that, and then I had a question after. It's, it sounds like it's up. It's up to you. F financial report okay. is where we are. Okay, sounds good. So um, I was, am unsure of who the uh, the phone number calling in uh, ending in seven five is. Uh, that's me, Jeremy check. R D. Okay, I just wanted um, to double check for the minutes. Thanks, R D. Yep. All right. Anything else about finances? Great. Thanks for that, Phil. Um, moving along, clerk's report. Jeremy, anything else to to add that you want to report on? Uh, no, I am keeping up with minutes and posting stuff to the website, um, and that's what I've been working on. I do need to get working on organizing files a little bit better, um, but that is something that I don't have time to do immediately, but we'll get around to it. Sounds great. Thanks for that. Um, before we get into the, the project manager's report, which I think is going to have a fair bit of meat, can we do the committee membership conversation? So, Chuck, do you want to start? Yes, uh, I would like to move that we uh, add Linda Gravel to the communications committee. Second. Second. Okay, I think I heard. I think I heard RD get in there first. Sorry, Siobhan. <laughs> All right, moved by Chuck. Yeah, I got a lot of RD <laughs> to, uh, to add Linda to the communications committee. Any further discussion? Jeremy, I see you have your hand up. Is this about this, or are you still, oh, is that still up from before? That's legacy. I'm sorry. I'll take okay. that down. Cool. Uh, any objections to Linda joining the communications committee? All right, motion passes unanimously, and Linda is on the communications committee. Ray? Yeah, um, first of all, I'd like to thank Linda for having been a member of the finance committee, and uh, as a result of her uh, dropping and now joining the communications committee. Uh, the good news is we have a spy in the communications committee. The um, uh, I understand that Christopher Schenk is going to uh, join the finance committee that was part of the, uh, the agreement that was worked out between Christopher and, and Linda. And Christopher, if I have this wrong, uh, let me know, but uh, move that uh, Christopher be added to the uh, finance committee. Second. Second. Okay, Siobhan did get, get at that time, so yeah. by Ray, <laughs> seconded by Siobhan. Any, uh, any questions or comments about adding Christopher Schenk to the finance committee? I see, Alan, I see you have your hand up. Is that about this or about other committee stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah, why don't you finish this bit and then get back to me? Sounds great. OK, any objections to appointing Christopher Schenk to the Finance Committee? No objections. Motion passes unanimously. Welcome to the Finance Committee, Christopher. Thank you for your help. Uh, Alan. Yeah, it's my understanding that Linda uh, is on the Policy Committee, and I believe she wants to continue serving on the Policy Committee. <clears throat> Does anybody know if the board has approved her? She said she's never been notified or has been able to find out that she actually is a member of the policy committee. If there's nobody that can say, yes, I remember, uh, I would move that that Linda be uh, <clears throat> appointed as a member to the policy committee. Second. OK, moved by Ellen, seconded by Jeremy. I, I think there's there's not a harm in um, even if it's Great redundant. Appointment. That's fine. Uh, any questions or concerns? Comments? Any objections to the motion? OK, motion passes unanimously. Linda is is now a new member or remains a member of the policy committee, depending on reality. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Alan. Um, and uh, I this isn't really a committee stuff, but um, we have someone who is not an actual governing board member. But um, so, so actually in, in this. 
um, maybe I'm getting this wrong. John Walters, are you are you a resident of Montpelier or East Montpelier? I forget. Uh, I am a resident of East Montpelier. East my, Montpelier. Ma okay. my mailing address is Montpelier. Okay, that's that's I, maybe that's where I'm getting confused. For some reason, I thought you were. I was I was going to say we need reps from Montpelier, and we don't have any. But, okay. Sorry. Clear, clear, clearing my brain. Nope, no problem at all. Um, I, if move a quarter mile, I I could qualify, but so you actually qualify as long as you get appointed by the city council. It doesn't really matter exactly where you live. You just have to convince them, frankly. <laughs> Because we, we, we have people who do not live in Vermont who serve on the governing board, so. Hmm. That is. <laughs> All right, so uh, anything else with committee membership? Okay, moving right along, uh, project manager's report. Have at it, Jerry. Sure enough. Uh, so pre-construction work and grants. Uh, the pre-construction work that we set out to do a few months ago, if, if you remember, in, it was September when we, uh, we uh, sent out notice to proceed for our poll inventories for Area A. Those are mostly completed. Uh, we, we Middlesex, Moortown, and Worcester are completed, and we have the data in hand, and we, we actually approved payment for that work today. Um, we have uh, East Montpelier is almost complete. They have just a few poles that they're catching up on that they had missed when they went through the first time. And for whatever reason, they couldn't get to the polls. So they're closing out their data this week, I believe. They'll certainly be done by the end of the year. And in, in Calus, um, our, our initial contractor provided information to us. We did our quality review. We found that some of that data wasn't up to our quality standard. So we had another contractor come in and is providing, is filling that data gap, if you will. Uh, that work is, is, is going on right now. So we, we are pretty close to uh, finishing air, that what we call area A, all of the uh, poll work and air, poll inventory work in area A. Uh, also, importantly, the grants that pay for that, we have gotten extensions. That work was supposed to be completed 31 December. We've gotten extensions to bring that work out to uh, June of 2022. It, it's not going to take until June to, of 2022, but they offered it. We took it. Um, and that's uh, similar to the high-level design that's going on. That The high-level design was, was meant to be completed uh, at the end of December, it's going to roll into January. Um, that's okay because that grant was also extended, so that work is is moving forward. Um, we 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 are also move, moving down the uh, the bullets here for the fiber purchase. We we are participating in the uh, Vicuda coordinated fiber bulk fiber purchase. Um, and we we are we we've purchased or are purchasing 300 miles worth of fiber that we have a, a a staggered delivery because we don't need 300 miles day one. So we've we've coordinated with the other CUDs and with Vicuda to to stagger that delivery. Um, we've also staggered the size of the fiber that we're buying. Some of it's 144, some of it's 72, some of it's 48. Uh, David Healy has, has worked out most of the details on this, but we're a, we're a part of this uh, bulk fiber purchase. You may have read John's uh, piece on that. That that's uh, I think was even in uh, VT Digger. Um, so so that's, yes, that's right. uh, forward. We also have. Uh, the, the the next bullet is about Northfield Roxbury. Uh, so so that information actually isn't quite so good. Um, that was that that was a uh, CARES grant, one of the original CARES grants that we got, and we had uh, until the end of the year to get folks fifty of uh, fifty some odd residences connected in uh, Roxbury Northfield. And 
what we we ran into into some very serious make ready problems. Uh, actually, the the make ready problems we ran into are basically a foul of Vermont law, and we are we are going to to make a, a complaint to the Public Utility Commission over this in coordination with ValleyNet, uh, who were the folks that were were implementing this for us. Um, but nonetheless, it's even though we could get another 90-day extension, because of this problem, we're not going to be able to complete that project in 90 days. So this is not a clawback because we never got the federal money. What we are doing is we're rescinding or pulling back the invoice that we had sent for payment. We, we're pulling that back. So it's re it's really not a clawback. Um there, there, there is about twenty-six thousand dollars worth of work that has been done on this by ValleyNet. That we're going to figure out how to deal with that as we go down the road, um, because these people still need to be served. That work may or may not still be useful. We'll figure that out down the road. Um, but we, so unfortunately, we have to uh, we we have to back out of this Northfield Roxbury project. And the, I was per, I was asked by by Rob Fish from the uh, the uh, VCBB to to pursue this this uh, complaint with the Public Utilities Commission because there's an interest statewide, if you will, to have an administrative record to document the problems that we're 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 getting with Make Ready, um, and th this is this is part of that that problems. So um, we're, we're going to follow up with that. We'll, we'll, we'll submit. I, and I don't know yet. I, I don't know yet what the level of complaint will be. I don't, we're not going to get resolution. That's not what we're looking for. But we do want to at least make sure there's a, there's an administrative record of this problem. Uh, and we'll do that uh, in the beginning of the year because there are a lot of folks that are out, out of town right now. And I'll take any questions on any of this, except for Ray. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ray. <laughs> so, I just wanted to mention that uh, the fiber, the 300 miles of fiber is costing us over $800,000. Uh, it's not money we have to put up with now. It'll be something we'll get a grant later on that will pay that. Uh, there's a whole mechanism that was established between Vicuda, the Vermont Community Foundation, Union, Union National Bank, I think, uh, for uh, a letter of credit, uh, three CUDs, et cetera, et cetera. And the 144 strand of, um, of fiber is over $4,000 for a mile, for, for one mile, uh, for grand. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big deal. And uh, it'll be the first of, frankly, many buys that we'll have for that. Jerry, Jerry, did you want to mention the area B and C polls and the statement of work change? A absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll do that and I'll answer Jonathan's uh, question, question as well. So we, we have 12 more towns that we uh, have put out an RF, uh, a, a request for bids. I shouldn't say an RFP. It's really not an RFP. We already went through the RFP process. Uh, a request for bids, and those are due Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Next week, they're due. Uh, fortunately, the money is in the bank, and there's a lot of interest in, in deploying people and keeping them in the field. So we're hoping to be able to get a, a good start on that. Um, so we're we're looking at, we're looking to start the remainder of of the uh, poll inventory work for our underserved uh, we're looking to start that you know as early as the beginning of the the very beginning of the uh, of the year let me take a step back Jonathan asked a question about make ready and what is make ready make ready is an a process a series of events and the end of that series of events is the the, where you want to put CV fiber on the pole, the pole is ready to accept CV fibers, physical fiber on that pole. That's the end process of the make ready. There's a whole application process and a contractor process and a, and a physical moving potentially of other wires to make room uh, on that pole. But make ready 
even though it's not the most expensive part of it, it 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 very well could be the long pole in the tent that will delay the construction and the delivery of fiber services to the premises. So make ready is something that we have been talking about, for example, with our uh, weekly meetings with WEC, it comes up every meeting. We've been talking about it for half a year. It's it's a it's a really big item. We're asking a lot of the utilities, uh, a, a lot of effort on the utilities to work with us. The poll, the utilities own the polls. The poll owners have a big stake in Make Ready, and uh, we've been working with them in advance to make this go as smoothly as possible. And and when we have our contractors on board that are going to do our design and that, and that are going to work us through the process, that's going to make the make ready all the, all the more uh, move all the more smoothly. It'll never be perfectly smooth, but when we have our design contractors on board working with the utilities and doing as much as we can in advance, we're, we're, we recognize make ready is a problem and we're doing everything we can to meet that problem. And it's not just us. Oh, the VCBB, the the broadband board, everybody knows that that this is an issue. David, I saw you had your hand up briefly. Did you want to weigh in at all? David, you're on mute. No, I'm all set. Okay. Any questions for Jerry about um, pre-construction, the fiber purchase, the Northfield Roxbury project, any sort of the stuff within his purview um uh if i may jeremy um sure i'm not i'm not sure i followed this is rd i'm not sure i followed uh all of jerry's uh, explanations about the northfield uh, roxbury problem um without putting too much burden on volunteers uh do we have a um a, a memo that something in in writing that we could that would explain this uh, kerfuffle and what we expect to present to the uh, uh, the the PUD. We we will we will RD. We don't we don't have that right now. I was actually on the on the phone today with the CEO of ValleyNet talking about exactly this issue. Um, right. And and I was uh, there. There's a uh, their their uh, outside plant manager who coordinates this work. Uh, just left for the va for the holiday vacation <laughs> so, today. Okay. Uh, so so when when she comes back, we're we're going we're going to work together and and pull this complaint together. And uh, you know if if you have any interest in you know being directly involved as a review of that or or you know want to help us with the language or I'm I'm, I'm very happy to share. Thank you. Thanks for that, RD. Any other questions for Jerry? Observations, concerns? All right. Thanks for that, Jerry. Moving on to the uh, 2022 budget. Ray, you want to talk about that? Sure, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, I, I do. Before we, after we do this, before we get to the next one, can we talk about town reports uh, for a second? I'm sorry I didn't add that earlier, uh, but the town reports is different from the annual report. And we want to make sure that we're covered by that. And so I, I, we want to talk about it a little bit, OK? So uh, with the 22, the 22 CD Fiber uh, 2022 budget, uh, the uh, the process is a kind of a three step process. The first process, the first part of this was that the board approved a budget. It was sent to the towns for their feedback. If any, uh, we held a public hearing in November. Uh, the first part was in October. And now we're at the, at the point where we actually adopt a budget. And um, uh, the recommendation is that we that we make any changes that we need to make uh, at this point in time. Um, and there are several changes. I sent an email out and I identified all those changes and hopefully you had an opportunity to look at those. Um, the total was it was only in the administration section. Uh, we don't have enough information to change pre-construction, construction or operations at this time. Uh, but that will come up during the course of the year. The changes included um, uh, adjusting the accounting uh, budget to reflect the contract that was signed after we had sent out the approved budget. 
Um, we adjusted uh, dues to reflect the fact that the CUDA is asking us all, all of the CUDs to pay dues uh, in the $11,500 range. Um, and we also made a change to the um, uh, treasurer stipend given the, uh, the statutory responsibilities and the commitment of time that's required by uh, any individual that's in that particular position. And so that went from $2,400 to $12,000 uh, for the year. Um, the total is 35,000. The only other thing that was changed in the budget was the, were the reserves. You may recall that we had um, uh, income and expenses and at the bottom of the line, it came to uh, 400 th some odd thousand dollars in terms of reserves. Uh, the net is like zero, right? We don't have any uh, extra money. Uh, the money goes into reserves. And that, those reserves were adjusted to reflect the 35,000, uh, which brought that to $414,290. I'm happy to answer more questions, et cetera. What I want to do is I'd like to put a motion in the chat room. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, the motion would be move the board adopt the CB Fiber 2022 budget as recommended by the Finance Committee and the Executive Committee, by the way, and dated 16 December 2021. That's the end of the motion. It's a $15 million budget. I heard a second from Jeremy Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Move just by wanted to get it in there before you went on with the rest of your discussion, Ray. <laughs> you wanted to be Siobhan, that's what it was. Right. Moved by Ray, seconded me. by Jeremy. Any questions, comments? T to me, there's not really any surprises here. I mean, this is something that we've that's plowed ground. I mean, there's a couple of little adjustments as you know as we've learned more, um, and I think Ray, as you've you know as you've said previously. This is likely a budget that's going to have to change um, next year, too. Um, this is our best guess for what we expect to be spending on a whole variety of things. Um, and then I see uh, Henry has a question, how much comes from grants? And, I, and so the answer is basically all. Um, basically, everything is covered by grants. I don't think we're borrowing any money. We've not taken any affirmative steps to take on any debt. Um, mm -hmm. And we, so we have quite a bit of grant money already approved, and we have quite a bit of grant money that we're expecting to secure next year, and probably the, the, sub, the year after that as well. The, the, there is uh, less than less than nine hundred thousand dollars expected from subscriptions and any installation fees uh, that uh, we might uh, be collecting. Uh, but again, as mentioned, the budget under stat under statute, we can change the budget during the course of the year itself. So as we become better informed, uh, maybe what our requirements are or what the income is going to be, uh, we'll, make some, we'll make some adjustments then. Yes, indeed. All right, well, I'm not seeing any hands or any, any protests. Are there any objections to adopting the budget? Oh, one moment, Jerry. Uh, so Certainly not an objection. I, I just saw something pass by in the chat and I, I, I wanted to make sure that everybody understands here we we are trying to optimize our grant position uh we we, we are very very much dedicated to optimizing the use of grants and then there's a hierarchy of low interest loans that follows that so there, there there's there's a, a a lot of opportunity before we need to get to going out into the actual bond market at the same time, what we're doing is trying to protect ourselves as we move through by ownership of assets so that when we get to the bond market, we're in a good position to be able to get whatever residual funds we might we might need. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there in response to what I just saw come across the chat. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, Henry, Vita is pretty low priority now. We may look at that down the road as a way of uh, filling gaps between grants and such. But yeah, that's not it's not something that we're we really need at this point. But uh, we we shall see down the road. OK, yeah, Ray. No, no, I'm, I'm good. OK, anything else on the budget? OK, any objections to uh, 
approving this question as presented. Okay, I don't hear any objections, so motion passes unanimously. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate the uh, the final tweaks and the adjustments as we uh, learned a bit more. Um, okay, uh, did you want to talk about the uh, the reports? Yeah. Uh, so I received an email from uh, the Northfield uh, uh, Northfield. I'm the Northfield delegate, saying that if I wanted something into the published uh, uh, book that goes before town meeting. Uh, in March, I needed to get it in by January 10th, 14th, some date. OK, um, I know that uh, I believe it's RD and, and, and Dave Healy have drafted uh, and what they're looking for is one page, a page and a half. Not not a lot. Right. We sent an annual report with 10 pages. I forget how long it was. That is not the report that we should be submitting. And after we take some action tonight and hopefully to approve a contract with NRTC, we'll have some really good news to include in any such report. OK, so um, I'm going to I'm going to look at David's and RD's and, and model one for myself, and I'll be happy to share that with uh, folks afterwards. But we should be looking at individually submitting these reports to our town count towns. Um, uh, this month in December. Don't wait till January. And Chuck has his hand up for, with much better information than I'm going to give you. <laughs> Go for it, Chuck. Well, uh, actually, Ray, what I was going to say is, you know, we have a communications committee meeting coming on Monday. Uh, uh, we're going to move it from the normal Thursday time slot to Monday instead. Um, and so uh, why don't we take this up as an item in the communications committee? Super. That sounds great. And then it will the onus once we have the final deliverables, the onus will be on the individual reps to get that to their you know town clerks, city clerks, et cetera, and make sure that it gets to the right place. Uh, David Healy said that Callus required theirs by December 10th. Um, so that's maybe they'll use a, a bit of what we already sent, or maybe they have something, or maybe you can just uh, arm twist folks there and just say this is what we've got. If you can sneak it into the middle of the PDF before you send it to the printer. Maybe that that can happen. I, I I know Berlin is like middle of January as well. Yeah. So. OK, anything else about I don't think we need to take any affirmative actions right now. I think we're going to kind of pitch it over the wall to communications and we'll, we'll just go from there. Okie dokie. All right. Next one is possible role shifts within CV fiber. So this one is uh, this is my agenda item. And uh, this is something I've shared with the executive committee and uh, wanted to make sure I shared with all of you. Um, I was, I would like to step away from the role of the chair um, and lower the amount of work that CV Fiber, that I'm essentially dedicated to CV Fiber. So three or so years now, I've essentially put a lot of my research and some other stuff that I should be doing for work and for family stuff on the back burner. And I would like to still be involved as uh, you know as much as I can, but I would like to do a bit of a handoff at this point. Um, and so I didn't have any sort of you know concrete uh, heir to the throne or something like that. We'd want to be overly grandiose. Um, but uh, having talked to to Jerry uh, quite a bit about this, he is interested in taking over as the chair and there is a certain uh there's a certain elegance to this and i just want to kind of share with you what we're thinking and get feedback there's no action on this item we just want to put this out there so that everybody's clear about how we think we might want to proceed so jerry is the alternate for berlin i'm the delegate for berlin we are thinking of asking the berlin select board to essentially flip those because the chair has to be a governing board member and then to ask you all to appoint uh, Jerry the chair at the January meeting. Um, and then so Jerry is already on the bank account, so there, there's that's convenient. Um, he's the project manager and so has obviously been you know, knee deep in this stuff for quite some time. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just I'll just leave it there. Jerry, is there anything else that you want to add before we open it up to other folks? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't actually uh, expect that you were going to point to this, Jeremy, but that's OK, <laughs> um, because 
you, you know, I'm, I've been dedicated to this since day one. Right. And, uh, and, and I, I would, I would be, I would be, uh, happy to follow in your footsteps here and keep this thing moving forward. Uh, I, I am going before the, uh, select board on the 20th of December in Berlin to be, so I'm going to, I'm going to resign as project manager and I'm, I'm asking the select board to, uh, uh, uh reinstate me as the, uh, the Berlin, uh, alternate, and then we'll ask them to, to flip flop, if you will, and make me the delegate and Jeremy, the, the alternate, I I'm, I'm not foreseeing any problems with that. I I'm on the agenda. They gave me two minutes, <laughs> maybe two minutes to say, no, go away. I, I don't know, but I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, I would, I, I, I'm, I'm dedicated to doing this. There's no question. All right. Uh, looks like uh, Jeremy, then Siobhan. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess the one thing that comes to mind is, well, thank you, Jeremy, for all that you've done. And also you, Jerry, for agreeing to take this on. Um, the one kind of whoa moment was, do we not need a project manager anymore? Um, because I know that you've been doing a lot of project manager stuff. And, you know, is, is that going to go away now that we have NRTC? Yeah, why don't you just go ahead and answer that, Jerry? Yeah, no, that is not going to go away. And it's this, this is a I'm glad you brought this up uh, because I, I I hope there if there's a misconception out there, I'd like to get rid of it right away. The, the, the fact that we have NRTC and that we're going to start working with Waitsfield Telecom does not mean that CV Fiber can just like say, oh, OK, now we're good. We don't we, those guys are going to do it all. <laughs> In, in fact, it's it, it's the it's the opposite. And but we know this because the budget that was just approved includes a executive director for the lack of a better term. We called it executive director. It's it's been used in other other C, CUDs. There needs to be somebody full time that is the <laughs> interface between CV Fiber and our consultants and contractors. Remember, we're the ones that are going to be hiring the contractors for construction, for make ready, for whatever, whatever else is coming up. We're hiring the contractors and we need that interface with, with N NRTC. And they're wonderful people, but you can't just walk away from them. We have, we have to be in contact with them every day. This is a full-time job. I cannot do that as, as a full-time job, but I, I have um, started drafting and submitted to to some folks a uh, uh, a, a statement of responsibilities. Of, of I'm trying to think what's the what's the term I'm looking for here for an executive director. What the job, job description? Is that? that thank yeah. you. I, I've started a job description for executive director, and we're you know we're circ we're starting to circulate that around, and we're go we're going to need to do this. And it's we the money is in the budget to have a full time person as executive director. There's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the budget for that purpose. All right. Thanks, Jerry. I have Siobhan then back to uh, back to Jeremy. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I, I think that we'll have. With Jerry, we'll have really good continuity because Jerry's been involved in a lot of this stuff was working on our initial grants was you know, way back when and just has, has it, it, I think it'll make it a smooth transition because he's been here and he's been doing all of this. And I, I was, I was kind of, well, who's going to do this when I heard Jeremy was, was stepping aside a little bit. And, and so when hearing Jerry is like, yeah, I, I, I think I could do this. I'm like, yes, yay. <laughs> so so I'm I'm very pro Jerry doing this. Thanks. Thanks, Siobhan. Uh, Jeremy, then Chuck. Uh, yeah, just kind of hammering the project manager thing. It seems like we've got a lot going on right now. Is it going to cause us problems, delays, whatever, to lose Jerry as project manager in the month or two that it takes us or more 
seeing as how our hiring has been. Oh man, you don't you you you, you must not know my mo. <laughs> okay, I, 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 <laughs> I you know I'm I'm just I'm just going to keep rolling, and okay. we're going to transition hopefully sooner rather than later. But there there I yeah. at least from my perspective, there aren't going to be any gaps. Okay, but I, I appreciate I appreciate assume. the comment because you're right. It looks like there could be a space. That, so there might be a space where nobody's getting paid, but there won't be a space where the work's not being accomplished. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to be our free project manager. Then. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> hey, let me, you, let me tell you, let me tell you, I got to tell you right now, man, I'm not the only one working their butt off on a regular basis, day in and day out. I'm, the, I'm actually the only one getting paid. So, you know, it, I don't yeah. no, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I know you do, man. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Jerry. Chuck. Uh, since it came up, um, I have absolutely no uh, bearing as to whether it's appropriate, but is a $120,000 salary enough for an executive director of this kind of organization? Um, and, and, you know, was that researched and, and, and what have you? Hey, that, that's, 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 that's a, a, that's a, a really good, a really good point that that's actually based on some of the original numbers that we had used way back when from last year. And, you know, that's also, uh, 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 in in the ballpark with some of the some of the other 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 folks that we that have public information about uh, that are that are working in this area, so it's it's kind of ballpark. But no, you're absolutely right, and and the budget is kind of a crayon drawing of how we're moving forward. And if that needs to be refined, we can we can refine that. Uh, if if that answers your question, I hope it does. It, it does. Yeah, thank you. Um, just you know, as as somebody who manages professionally, I, I have kids four years out of college making much, and I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to shortchange someone. We want raw horsepower in this role. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, Walker. Uh, Maybe this is to Jerry or Jeremy. Um, what do you envision? Like, if we have an executive director that's paid, is that more of a project manager role, or is it more like what's the what? I guess what's the relationship between the board and this paid executive director? I'm a little confused so, about exactly what that role would be. Yeah, no, that no, that that's great. So the. This executive director would would uh, report directly to the executive committee, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I've been doing as the as 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 the as the PM. You know, basically David Dave, You know, David Healy has kind of been my 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 boss, if you will, is the way that we we have set this up. But it's still the executive committee that the uh, responsibility uh, would be to uh, uh, fulfilling the executive committee's requirements. So that that person would be under the purview of the executive committee, and of course, the executive committee is under the purview of the entire governing board. So that you know, there there's a there's a hierarchy there, but there's there's we we really need somebody in the trenches on a day to day uh, basis to make sure that everything stays on track and that and that the executive committee and through them the governing board is fully aware of what's going on because there are so many micro decisions that are going to need to be made that you 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 can't just send all these decisions back up to to committee it's impossible right, uh, right. so that that's 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 how we're looking at going and I'll also add that this type of structure is also occurring at other CUDs it, it kind of seems to be a natural uh, or at least a reasonable way to move forward. Maybe natural is not the right word. Thank you. Any other questions uh, about this? Yes. Or Jeremy, I have one. I'm sorry, I can't find the uh, 
the little hand icon. Sure. At the moment, um, I in 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 light of some of the um, uh, the critiques that have been offered about um, CUDs and about CV fiber in particular, I think it's essential that the executive committee get on the stick immediately, uh, putting out a um, uh, a job description and a, 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 a seeking a, a an executive director as soon as possible um having a professional uh com- professional leadership in what is at the moment chiefly a volunteer organization is going to be i think vital in projecting an image of competence and um and securing public confidence uh in our efforts so i think we we shouldn't lose a moment in finding an executive director. And um, I would say that um, I, I, if, if the compensation that we are offering in the, in the budget is, is not sufficient, come back to the board. Um, but professional leadership, I think at this, at this juncture is uh, absolutely crucial. Agreed. Any, anything else? Uh, I do, just before having said that, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, you've done uh, yeoman service. Great, great work. I've been so grateful for your help in uh, helping me ascend this uh, very steep learning curve. I just um, I neglected to it, it say that at the very beginning. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are welcome, and thank you all for putting in the work that you put in. Uh, anything else on this? I mean, like I said, we don't have really any action items right now, but anything else that we should consider as we're going forward? Okay, very well. Um, moving on to uh, the NRTC Master Services Agreement and the contracts. Ray, you want to introduce this and perhaps the next item as well? Sure. So the next two items have to do with the contract negotiations. And so uh, I'm going to put a motion in the chat room uh, that um, uh, that we will find if this is needs to be an executive session. And then the second motion will actually be the motion to put us into executive session. And so here is um, here is the first motion. And um, then I'll read it. Uh, move the pursuant to one VSA section 313 A1A. We find that premature public knowledge of our discussions relating to the developer operator contract and WEC contract negotiations will put CV fiber at a competitive disadvantage. Second. So moved by Ray, seconded by Jeremy. Any further discussion of this? So I want to point out that th- th- this is sort of combining the two. Uh, agenda items that I have here for at 720-735 into a single motion to go into executive session. Um, we will likely not have action related to the WEC agreement. We likely will have action related to the NRTC, uh, MSA, and contracts and such after we leave executive session. I just want to make sure that that's clear as we're going in. So um, any objections to this motion? Okay, motion is adopted unanimously. Thanks, Ray. Part two. So the second motion is that move we enter into executive session to discuss the contracts reference in the previous motion pursuant to one VSA section 313A3, and that we include the project manager, treasurer, and all board members whose information is needed in accordance with one VSA section 313B. So second. Okay, that was seconded by RD, moved by Ray, seconded by RD. Jeremy? Uh, did you mean alternate board members, Ray, rather than board members? Because Yeah, all board members, and frankly, every alternate is also a board member. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, board members would be included by default. The only question is then the alternates, I think. I, I think, can we friendly amend that, Ray, so we can have... All board, and alternate, and all board and alternate members. Okay. Uh, John? 
Uh, yeah, uh, two things. One, uh, I, I will be bowing out from this. Uh, can, I, can I get Ray to give me an update on any action that is reportable for the update? Uh, and two, um, regarding our professionalism, I have to say we're like 31 minutes ahead of schedule on the agenda. So, fine. <laughs> 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 Thanks, John. Yeah, so Ray, if you could follow up with John just to loop him in. So as we're writing the writing the next updates, that will be helpful. As always. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. So um, Thanks, John. I see your, your comments there, Henry. Yeah, so we can we can chat more about um, the specifics of the contract as we get into the executive session. Any objections to entering <clears throat> the executive session to discuss these two items and including the folks that we're including? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously, and thank you very much. I'm going to ask folks who are not board members or alternates to please disconnect. Uh, Christian, we will, uh, I think Jeremy will catch up with you in terms of meeting minutes and such. Thank, yeah, just send me what much. you have up until now, Christian, and I will uh, finish them up from here. Great. Thank you so Scott. much. Okay.